Well, I've been restoring several small portable 8-track players that I've had in my collection for a while. And I remembered that I had had this one for quite a long time. This is the 1978 Mego uh, 2XL robot. Uh, it was kind of like a uh, teaching toy where you would answer trivia questions by selecting buttons which would play corresponding tracks on an 8-track tape. <coughs> it uses a standard, uh, I want to call it the AudioVox 8-track uh, mechanism, but what's really intriguing about this is the way that they had wired in a special circuit board, which causes these buttons that you see on the front which basically correspond to tracks 1, 2, 3, and 4 of a regular 8-track to uh, always seek that appropriate track no matter which order the buttons are pushed. For instance, if you're playing track 4 on the uh, tape and you want to go to track 3, you push track 3 and it will click the advance three times and bring it to track three. And likewise you could push track one and then three and then two and whatever order you pick them it will play the appropriate track. Where most eight track players they have to go in order. This one is able to take and play in any order. So if you were to think of this thing kind of like a jukebox Normally a jukebox has to place selections in the order that they're loaded into the machine's uh, system. Whether it's a uh, record carousel or a straight record holder or whatever, it plays them in the order that they're loaded. Where this selector can play in any order. And it's very interesting how they made this work. And since I just restored this, before putting it back together... I wanted to show how this works. Now, I don't have the power cord, so I rigged up a 9-volt battery. This is one of my British batteries with a quarter-inch plug cut off of uh, earphones or something. And center terminal is positive. The outer terminal is, you know, the ground or the negative side. It's an unusual plug that they used for some reason instead of using a standard barrel style. When you look inside of one of these, you'll find that the actual 8-track mechanism is a standard AudioVox style. That all of the AudioVox car stereos, that Emerson that I just showed in a previous video, also has this exact same mechanism as well as the uh, one that I put in my truck, which is a smaller unit. As you can see, from here to here is what I'm going to call the deck. And on the deck you have your standard components of the uh, AudioVox style 8-track. It has this big round white disc which catches this paw, which is pulled down by a solenoid. When it catches this, it pushes forward, tripping the thing underneath this little circuit board, moving the head one position. And as you can see, it moves the head one position. Now normally this circuit board, it has uh, four contacts and a, and a common. It, it simply tells the display lights on the front of the tape deck what track is being played. This is AudioVox. This whole thing here is AudioVox. It's actually made by this brand. I can't pronounce it. They made this deck for AudioVox, Emerson. Probably most of the uh, home stereos also use the same deck. Obviously this one has a 9 volt motor instead of a 12 volt motor. As you can see the mounting for the motor, it has space for a bigger motor. So they had to use a different motor. These things are all plagued by the same problem that this white bracket that holds the head, where the screw is in it, it splits. 
And they've all done that because at the factory they were tightened too tight and over time the stress, it's like a silicone plastic and it, it cracks over time. So like most of mine I've sealed in between the bracket and the head with uh, basically just painter's caulk, tub and tile caulk. And it will it makes it very strong and stable. I've never had a problem with the heads moving after that. Now they've added this micro switch with this lever, which is actuated when the track advance trips the head. But then, this thing that would normally run the indicator lights is wired into this board. And there is a IC chip on this board. And this is actually quite the complicated board, which I'm going to demonstrate. The fact that no matter where you are on the tape, the board will automatically return you to whatever track you select. So I'm going to put a tape in. It's Lynn Anderson's Listen to a Country Song. Pardon the shaking here. You can see the, uh, the disc is spinning. And when I press track one, it's playing track one now. I'm keeping the volume down for the sake of copyrights. Now if I press track two, it'll click once to track two. Try it this way. Track three, track four. Now the interesting thing is I can go from track 4 to track 3 automatically. It will click the mechanism automatically three times. Now it's playing track 3. Likewise, I can go from track 3 to track 1. I can go to track 4, track 2, track 3, track 1. I can go anywhere on the tape automatically, even backwards. There's track four, track three. Somehow between the board that normally would operate the uh, lights, indicating what track you're playing, communicates back through the circuitry, telling the unit which track to play. And this thing must be like the readout switch that confirms that it's clicked three times. Because if I do hold that down, then it won't work. It's an interesting uh, deal they made. You can hear that song is track four. That's track three. If I can't be track one. You're the one that I was reaching for. I think I can give you a better view here what it's doing. If I do it normally, you can see the head bracket. It's on track one. You'll see it drop. Track two. Track three track four, track one. That's how an eight track would normally work. But on this unit, I can go track four. I can go back to track three, four, three, two, four, one, two, one, two, one, two. So for something that was just meant to be a kid's toy, it was quite a elaborate piece of engineering went into this uh, circuitry here. There is an IC chip in there. Now bar bear in mind this is from 1978. They took something pretty old-fashioned as an 8-track, which at the time was nowhere near the end of its life. It still had another four years to run, and used it. And they had equipment similar to this in the schools like the System 80 machine and 
They had one called the Mind, which also used 8-track cartridges and a similar mechanism so that you could answer questions and the right or wrong answers were recorded on the different tracks of the tape. So thus, I found that when you activate the regular uh, tripping mechanism, that the tape trips, which is right here, which I can't seem to... It always returns to the same track that it's that the buttons pushed in. So it will play the same track over and over and over again until you change the buttons on the front. Just thought this would be an interesting thing to showcase before I put it back together. It's quite a unique, quite a fascinating uh, mechanism and it was really cool. Because the actual mechanical part is the same thing that's in my car stereo, KGS 1000, uh, my Emerson. They bought it from another company, and they were able to mo mod um, modify it by using the actual circuit board that ran the lights and running it through some kind of network in this thing to make it act the way it acts. fascinating piece of engineering and I bet this thing was quite expensive but yet they're out there they're selling as cheap as 25 bucks and for any 8-track collector they really ought to have one because they're kind of cute and they're kind of cool and and it's just a fascinating piece of technology the 2XL robot from 1978 8-track version